Well, good morning and welcome to Venture Church Online. My name is Dan and I'm one of the pastors here. And today we are meeting together in our community groups in one another's homes. Now, one of the reasons we do this, we, we have this meeting rhythm that on the first Sunday of every month, we gather together in each other's homes. And on the rest of the Sundays, we gather together as one big church family at the Beaconsfield School. And, and we do this because we believe that God has called us to really be intentional about cultivating a sense of community and to create space where we can get to know one another on a deeper level. Uh, community groups give us a great uh, place and space uh, to live out the one another commandments of the New Testament, where Jesus calls us to love one another to pray for one another, to care for one another, to uh, encourage one another, and yes, even to spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And we believe community groups is a great environment for that to happen. So if you're new to the church and you're not yet plugged in to one of our community groups, we would love to help you find a group. If you're interested in taking that step, you can simply email us at hello at venturechurch dot org dot uk and we'll help you find a group but for now tash is going to uh, open a passage for us as we continue in our teaching series on the upside down kingdom so over to you tash well good morning today we finish our series in the upside down kingdom as we look ahead to celebrating and remembering good friday what jesus did on the cross for us and easter sunday the the wonderful good news of the resurrection um, but today we're going to look at this whole idea that to enter into the kingdom, we must become like a child. Luke chapter 18, verses 15 to 17 says this, People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Now if you read over this whole passage of Luke chapter 18, you will notice a theme coming through around humility and what it means to come to God and to receive the blessings of his kingdom. Directly before it we have the um, account of the tax collector and the Pharisee and the comparison between their two postures or their attitudes. And then after it, we have, of course, the rich young ruler who um, finds it hard to surrender uh, in order to come into the kingdom. And then directly in the middle here, we have this little moment of Jesus' encounter with the children. Now, as a Jewish tradition for mothers to bring their children to some distinguished rabbi on their first birthday in order to be blessed, so these were not just children, these were actually infants, they were babes. And so the disciples clearly thought that Jesus blessing these babies was below him. Here was Jesus, he was busy, he was an important person with a lot to do. And not only that, but the rich young ruler is waiting uh, to see him. And so obviously the disciples make a judgment call here. And they think to themselves, these little ones are not important enough nor worthy enough to take up the rabbi's time. And so behaving a bit like Jesus' bouncers, they uh, try to, um, you know, re they rebuke the mothers for bringing these babies to Jesus and try to turn them away. But Jesus challenges both the disciples' behavior and their attitude. Because not only does he insist are not hindering these little ones to come to him, but he also raises them up as role models of what it means to be citizens in the kingdom of God. In the upside down kingdom, it's not the important nor the powerful who belong to the kingdom. Rather, it's those who are not trying to make themselves worthy, those who are not trying to pretend to have it all together. You know, the virtue of a baby, I can imagine it in Jesus' mind, according to Jesus, is their absolute dependence and their vulnerability. And unlike adults, children don't have to work at those postures. They're, it's just part of what it means to be a child is that you are incredibly dependent and you are incredibly vulnerable. 
In fact, a baby is literally dependent upon their parents for their survival. Now, as grown-ups, we have a tendency, don't we, to feel as though we need to outgrow independence and vulnerability. We feel as though we need to be dependent. We feel as though we need to have it all together all the time. We need to wear this mask of resilience and saying that, you know, I, I'm strong. I've got this all together. And sometimes we make the mistake of equating that with spiritual maturity. But in the upside down kingdom, it's those who, who take up the heart of a child, those who nurture the heart of a child, the heart of dependency and of vulnerability, of honesty, who experience the deeper blessings of the kingdom. I wonder if you think about your life for a moment. Where in your life do you need to become more like a child? Are there areas of life that you are relying on your own strength and your own ability and capacity? Where do you need to become more like a child? The second point to take from this passage is the kind of open-hearted life that Jesus expects from those in his upside-down kingdom. It's a theme that um, comes through really strongly in Luke's gospel in particular, this sort of theme of hospitality, of welcoming others, of a kind of invitational life. Um, Jesus rebuked his disciples to not hinder these little ones coming to him. In Mark's gospel, the language is much more stronger. It kind of talks about Jesus being indignant, being outraged at the disciples' behavior here. Jesus is saying to these disciples, it is not your place to judge who gets to be close to me or who gets to be blessed by me. In fact, in the upside down kingdom, Jesus' followers are to be those who are radically welcoming to those who no one else thinks is valuable or worthy or lovely. In fact, the church should be a place where every person is talked to and welcomed and valued no matter who they are, their station in life, their quirks, their capacities or their appearances. Why? Because we all were once the unworthy and unlovely who received an invitation to sit at the king's table, not because of our own merit, but because the son made it possible for us to be there. Bob Goff in his book Love does um, tells a couple of stories about, uh, you know, being in places where he wasn't, he shouldn't have been, he didn't have the right to be. And he, he talks about this one line in one of his chapters, which really stuck out to me. He said this, Jesus said the people who followed him should think of themselves more like ushers rather than bouncers. And it would be God who decides who gets in. We're the ones who simply show people their seats that someone else paid for. I love that, that last line. We are the ones who get to show people their seats that someone else, that Jesus paid for, kind of changes our perspective on our role in the world, that we have um, this opportunity to, to extend radical hospitality to others, to extend an invitation to others to come in to the kingdom. And it's not about whether they've got everything together. It's not about, you know, whether their lives are already sorted out. It's that Jesus wants them to come. And so um, the upside down kingdom way of life is that of radical hospitality. I wonder if we think about your own life, when did someone make you feel like you were not only welcome but valuable? And why was that significant to you? And then the third point that I just want to make from this passage or notice from this passage is how Jesus thought that it was a noble task to bless these little ones. In Mark's gospel, it says that Jesus took these babes in his arms, he prayed for them, and he blessed them. He considered a worthwhile pursuit to speak words of blessing over these little ones. Now, we don't often talk about how we as God's people are called to bring bless it, God's blessing into the world through our words. But throughout the Bible, we see the practice of people blessing others. 
And in fact, the biblical concept of blessing had to do with speaking the intention or favor of God over someone. One author um, summarizes it like this. He says, um, to bless someone is to desire God's favor, goodness, and purpose to be the crowning reality of that person's life. Now, we live in a world where cursing others is more common than blessing others. We so often use our words to manipulate, to tear down, to undermine, and to belittle. Jesus used his words to empower, to enable, to speak value, to instill courage, and to speak God's intention and hope over others. Now, sometimes, yes, his words were firm and sometimes gentle. It really depended upon the heart of the listener. But in each circumstance, his words were both powerful and truthful. Modern psychology affirms this truth, that words stick to us and they shape our thoughts and attitudes about ourselves. That we understand ourselves through the words of others. And so as members of the upside down kingdom, Jesus calls us to use our words to speak God's blessing over others. And our words are more powerful than perhaps we think. Sadly, many of us don't think before we speak or others of us withhold speaking blessing because we have our own insecurities to overcome. But in the upside down kingdom, we are invited to bring God's blessing into the world through our words. I wonder what would it take for you to speak blessing over people every day? What would it look like for you to speak God's intention and God's hope over people's lives every day? So this morning in, in your community groups, I want to encourage you to, to dwell a little bit more in this passage in Luke chapter 18. Maybe share with one another, where do I need to become more like a child in my life? When was a time that somebody welcomed me and showed me my value and why was that significant to me? And then what would it look like for me to, to speak blessing over others? And then I want to offer another, um, another opportunity for you as a community group. Perhaps in your community you do have children or even babies. Why not take a moment today to um, speak blessing, words of blessing over those children, over those babes. Speak God's intention over their lives. Can you imagine how powerful that will be to these children in our community groups to hear from grown-ups God's heart for them? So why don't you take a moment today to do that? It could be you do it over lunch. It could be that you break up into smaller groups and you have uh, a child in each group. Uh, it could be that you have babies in your group and you just take a moment as a group to pray over each babe. Just think about how powerful that is to speak God's blessing over those little lives. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I hope and pray uh, that you will enjoy this time together in your communities. But before you go, can I just give you a few notices uh, things we want to encourage you to mark your calendars for to join us in. And the first one is that tomorrow night to help us kick off um, Passion Week as we prepare to celebrate both the agony of the cross and the glory of the resurrection, we're going to kick off this week uh, with a night of worship together. So we're going to invite you to join us tomorrow night in place of our regularly scheduled monthly prayer meeting. We're going to repurpose this night to just be a night of praise and worship and a powerful time to kind of fix our hearts on Jesus as we think about the week ahead and prepare for all that it means for us. So tomorrow night, 7.45 p.m. at St. Thomas Church. Hope you can join us for that. And of course, on Good Friday, uh, we're gonna have a service at Restore Hope. This service will be from 2.30 to 4 p.m. And we're gonna be looking at the horror and the beauty of the cross. That's our theme. And so there will be um, activities for um, kids there, a family-friendly service. Uh, it's gonna be interactive and engaging. We're gonna have different monologues. We're gonna share communion together. I believe it's gonna be a powerful, powerful service. Uh, so to come together and remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. And then on Sunday, Easter morning, we'll be gathering at the Beaconsfield School at our usual time at 10.30 a.m. for an Easter celebration service together. And can I just encourage you, 
This is a wonderful opportunity if you uh, have a friend or family member who might not yet know the Lord, I invite you to encourage them to come along for Easter Sunday. We're going to proclaim the glory of the gospel and what Jesus' life, death, and resurrection means for all of us. And we're really going to be focused on reaching those who might not yet know Christ uh, with this message of how the resurrection of Jesus changes everything. So please get your friends there, get your family members there, and let's pray together that they'll have an encounter with God that will change their life. Okay, uh, the next Sunday as well, we're going to have another opportunity uh, for uh, people who are in your circle of concern, your circle of influence, who maybe don't know the Lord, another kind of evangelistically themed service where our guest speaker, Simon Edwards, is going to come and talk to us about how can I be happier. We're hoping those who come along to our Easter service will be intrigued uh, by that topic and will want to come back and others might want to come and join us too. And again, this is going to be an evangelistically centered message uh, with a little bit of Q&A. So a different service that's designed around helping to reach people who are far from God. We've been seeing God work and move in Venture Church. We've been experiencing some momentum and some growth. Uh, it's an energy and it's super exciting, but what we long to see are for lost people who don't know the Lord to be able to come and to join our family and to grow together as they discover who Christ is and what he's done for them. So these are two great opportunities to invite others along. So I encourage you to be praying now about who you can invite. I also want to just throw out on your um, radar our next Friday night feast is going to be on April the 28th at 7.45 p.m. at the Cottrell's home. Uh, if you are in the um, arts and crafts industry, if you're in any way involved in media or entertainment or craftsmanship, uh, this Friday night feast is for you to come together and network with others who are in a similar line of work to think about what are the, what are the challenges you face in your industry, what are the gospel opportunities, and what might it look like to be really fruitful where God has placed you in your daily context. So mark your calendar Friday, 28th of April, and please do sign up and let us know you're coming so we can cater for that. Finally, last announcement, I know a lot of exciting things happening, is on um, Sunday, May 21st, we are having our Venture Church launch party, and it is going to be awesome. I'm so excited to, to come together and celebrate this day uh, as a church family to recognize what God is doing in and through this church as he begins to lead us um, from where we've been into the future vision that he's given us. So it's going to be a morning to celebrate God's faithfulness and really just to gather and party together uh, and recognize who God is and what he's done for us. Uh, the unique thing about this as well is we're going to make it a whole day affair, at least uh, Sunday morning through Sunday afternoon. We're going to gather for a service at Restore Hope, and then we're going to have a large meal and feast together. Uh, we're going to have some fun, some food, some fellowship, some games, hopefully some bouncy castles for the kids. It's going to be an all-out party that you don't want to miss. Uh, but we also want to encourage you to, again, invite others to come along and celebrate what God is doing. Particularly, we want to invite you to think about, is there someone that's no longer with us in our church body today that used to be part of the Minster, the Minster or Latimer Church, uh, that maybe the Lord has led on into other places? Uh, some have even moved out of town, but we want to invite those people who've been with us as some part of the journey beforehand to come back and join us for this celebration. We recognize that many of them will have uh, church commitments already in the morning. If that's the case, they're welcome just to join us for lunch and the party afterwards, uh, but they will need to RSVP as will you so that we can cater for the food. So uh, this week we'll be sending out, I think by Tuesday, it should hit your inbox, an easy to share invitation and sign up. And so we want to invite you to think about who uh, should join us for that from our past journey together. Uh, who could you invite? And please do forward those invitations on and encourage people to sign up and join us for our launch party. We are going to celebrate what God has done and what he is doing as he leads us forward into the future. So enough from me. Let me uh, just stop talking so you can get into your groups and process the questions and uh, the passage that Tash just shared with us. So have a blast today as you grow together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for our worship night.